Okay, question eight. Oh, just a note on the last question. Um, my printer has been stupid, but there was one more row on that previous question. Um, so it might have tripped you up because that first one was correct, but all three of the next ones were obviously incorrect. So again, I don't think it was too tricky because there was one clear row that was correct. Okay, question eight. As mammalian muscle uses energy to contract, it needs an energy supply. Complete the following passage by choosing the best term to fill each gap. Now, this is tricky because um, it's getting you to link different areas of the A-level together. So you've got to be linking your knowledge of respiration, which you've done, um, I think, last, yeah, last year. I want to say last year. Or is it this year? Anyway, you'll have done respiration with Miss Dixon, so you should know about that, but it's being able to link those ideas to this newer topic. So most ATP for muscle contraction is generated by aerobic respiration in organelles called, that's dead easy, hopefully, mitochondria. Most of this ATP is produced by the stage of aerobic respiration called, and again, you should know this from your module with Miss Dixon, it's oxidative phosphorylation, oxidative phosphorylation. If the oxygen supply is insufficient, ATP can also be obtained from anaerobic respiration in which pyruvate is converted to the toxic product lactic acid. So again, you should know that from your respiration module. Also, maybe from your GCSE knowledge, get lactic acid in um, anaerobic respiration. Or lactate, you can have lactate as well. A third source of ATP in muscles involves the transfer of a phosphate group to ADP. So you might remember it like this. Again, from your work with Miss Dixon. Um, from a substance called, and uh, this one is maybe one that was a bit trickier to remember. Remember? It's because I'm thinking phosphocreatine. Phosphocreatine. Or you can have uh, creatine phosphate. Either's fine. So maybe brush up on your um, other topics as well now that we're getting, you know, we're getting towards the end of the course now. So you need to make sure that your knowledge from all the other modules is good as well. During the contraction of skeletal muscle, energy from AT is used to break the... Now, I don't think... Let me just double check on the marks. I don't think you're allowed just bonds. No, you're not allowed just bonds. You've got to show more understanding than that. So to break the cross bridges, um, what else are you allowed? Oh, go back again. Uh, cross links, cross bridges, that's it. So you've got to use that terminology, cross bridges. So from this diagram here, when they join together, we get cross bridges forming between the myosin head and the actin filament. Can't just say bonds. Um, that hold the actin and the myosin together. So hopefully you've got four. I think four is probably reasonable to ask. You should get mitochondria easy. Hopefully you'd get oxidative phosphorylation. Hopefully you'd get lactic acid. That one's a bit tricky. Um, and then the last two you should get as well. So, well, obviously go for six, but anyway. Next question. Figure 3.3 .3 is a diagram representing the neuromuscular junction in mammals. Now, I think Miss Fleming went over this a little bit with you, but I also uploaded my stuff. So here we've got our myelinated sheath on an axon. So this must be the end of the motor neuron. And this must be the muscle. So we've got our neuromuscular junction. Um, what type of molecule forms ion channels W and X? 
Now, uh, I think this question was on your last test as well. So hopefully you've already been through the um, mark scheme for this one because not many of you, you got this. Have I given, I don't know if I've given you that back. Message me and let me know if I've given you that back. Anyway, what type of molecule forms ion channels? The type, it's not asking you about sodium, um, potassium, or anything like that. It's asking you what type of um, 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 molecule forms those channels, and it's proteins. Some of you just overcomplicated what it was asking you. So proteins are embedded in the membranes, aren't they, to make those channels? Identify region Y. So although we don't call this a synapse because it's a neuromuscular junction, it is still referred to as the synaptic cleft. Or I think you can just get the mark for cleft. Okay. Again, yeah, I think this was in the last test. Name the enzyme found in region Y. Well, acetylcholine is a very common neurotransmitter and we need to have the enzyme which breaks that down. So acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter and the enzyme that breaks it back down again so it can reform the vesicles into the um, presynaptic ball. And it, oh yeah, it tells us here, look, acetylcholine. The enzyme that breaks it back down again is acetylcholine esterase. Acetyl or acetylcholine, however you want to say it, choline esterase. Okay, next question. Um, skeletal muscle is one of the main tissues where glucose is removed from the blood in response to insulin. So again, it's kind of GCSE knowledge that glucose is stored as glycogen and it gets stored in the liver and it gets stored in muscle tissues so another type of tissue is liver tissue or if you're feeling super clever it's called hepatic tissue and i think you've done i can't remember if you did liver with me last year or if you're doing it now i think you're doing it now with miss fleming so hopefully you'd know that term hepatic refers to the liver but you're allowed to just say liver tissue that's fine if you're ever unsure of the posh term, just use the term that you are sure is correct. Okay, next one. Explain why glucose is required for the contraction, contraction of skeletal muscle. Explain why. So that means it requires a bit more um, understanding. So first of all, we've got the obvious one. Um, glucose is required... Um, for respiration to produce ATP or release energy you could say but why why do we need energy why do we need ATP for muscle contraction so it goes back to that that diagram there and it actually tells you a bit I think in the question the energy is actually needed to break the cross bridges that form between the actin and myosin. It's not to make the link, it's to break it. And it's not for the um, power stroke, it's to break that bond there. Not bond, sorry, that link. So um, energy or ATP is required to break the cross bridges between the myosin heads and actin um, so that the myosin head is reset uh, ready for the next power stroke. So again, if you've not looked at my my PowerPoints, I've put them on Teams, so have a look if um, if you struggled with that, because I think it is a tricky topic. I spent quite a long time 
over the years getting my head around it so have a look and let me know um if you want me to go over that a bit more i'm really hoping to be back in next week so hopefully any sort of key areas i'll be able to go through with you and i can go through the test with you next week as well that's my plan that's why i'm hoping so we'll see um do we need to say why it needs to be reset i don't think so no we don't okay right stop that one there and one more one more video after this 